remembers the year 2006. I remember it a little too vividly as I was 14 that year, which means for me, it means I was drunk yesterday. It was a year filled with Green Day, Fallout Boy, and lots and lots of cringe. No MySpace though, I was too hashtag not like other girls to even attempt using social media back in the day. But one of the biggest and most important cultural icons that I think came from the year 2006 was an absolutely monumental cultural landmark known as My Immortal. If you haven't already, you gotta check out this video that internet historian did animating the My Immortal fanfic it's absolutely brilliant. For some context, My Immortal was a piece of self-insert Harry Potter Twilight-esque fan fiction. It's about a girl named Ebony Darkness Dementia Raven Way, although sometimes her name is spelled Enobi and sometimes it's spelled Enoni and sometimes it's spelled Ibobi. Ebony, are you okay? There's lots of typos in this story and it's written in very much 2006 speak where people would say things like, lol, you are tip Pwned, things like that. She, she writes it like that. And it's a piece of Harry Potter fan fiction where this self-insert main character, Ebony, Anobi, Abobi, whatever you want to call her. What the hell are you doing, mom? is a goth girl going to Hogwarts, and I think she's also a vampire, and I think Draco Malfoy's also a vampire, and she has lots of sex with Draco. Then he put his thingy into my you-know-what, <laughs> and we did it for the first time. <laughs> and they go to a good Charlotte concert together, and everybody looks just like Joel Madden. It's a great story, and it's a wonderful testament to how cringe self-insert fanfiction can become, but also how absolutely hilarious it can become as well. On my channel before, I've mentioned the quote that has been attributed to both Oscar Wilde and Aristotle, the quote that says, life imitates art. And I believe that that quote seems to come more and more true every day. While we can look back at a piece of cultural iconography like My Immortal and look at the ways that it really depicted the cringe teenage culture of 2006 and that era, and also exemplified the ways that a lot of teenage like to play with characters in fan fiction and insert themselves and figure out where their own lives are going as their brains develop before they develop a sense of being able to empathize with other points of view and remove themselves from a story and view that story critically. I'm not gonna try to get too deep into My Immortal, which is more meme than literature. It was Voldemort. However, this is all to say that life imitates art because J.K. Rowling, the author of the Harry Potter series, the one who created the universe where a thing like My Immortal could exist in the first place, that woman, J.K. Rowling, has now unironically written her own piece of self-insert fan fiction in which she is a victim who must get avenged for her own murder because everyone is just too mean to her on the internet. You can't make this shit up. Life imitates art. Let's talk about it. Get you some nuts. There was lots of memes. Makes me wonder if I should take up lesbianism. Chicago. You guys asked for it. What's up my fellow small business supporters? I'm Savvy and welcome back to Savvy Writes Books, the channel where we talk about books and business, where today we are going to be talking about books. In fact, we are going to be talking about one book in particular and that is the recent book that just came out by famous billionaire author JK Rowling, best known for the Harry Potter series and for being an asshole on Twitter. Her new book, The Ink Black Heart, was just recently released and I wanted to take a look at some of the discussions surrounding it because they're really funny. Although, I haven't actually read the book yet. Oh, come on! If you guys want me to read the book and you want to see a full review of it, because I heard a lot of the book is her just like making up tweets that people would say to be mean to her and filling hundreds and hundreds of pages with those. Like, it looks kind of hilarious and also kind of awful. So if you guys are interested in me roasting it in a review... Boom. Roasted. Or, I mean, I guess I haven't read it yet, so I can't say definitively that it's bad. So I guess just reviewing it. I, I have a feeling it's going to be bad, though. If you guys are interested in that, please let me know in the comments below. It's like a thousand pages, and I don't want to pay for it. So if anyone has any, like, workarounds, uh, hit me up in the comments below or in the DMs, wherever you prefer. But before we get into that, please take a minute to subscribe if you're new to this channel. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 11 a.m. Central Time, I put out new videos all about books and business. And don't forget to check out my 
second channel, Your Morning Guru, as well, where right now we're preparing for a 5k race. That's exciting. We're gonna be doing a little charity fundraiser. So you can check out my website, SavvyWritesBooks.com, linked in the description below, where our merch for the 5k fundraiser is now available. All the profits from those are going to go to charity. So that'll be exciting. That race is gonna happen at the end of October, so stay tuned for that. Now before we get into today's mess of a video, I want to give a quick thank you to all of my Patreon supporters for supporting this channel and for being awesome. Guys, Patreon supporters' names are up on the screen, and if you take a look in the description below, you can see all Patreon supporters who give $5 a month and up because they can link their own website, stores, social media, causes they care about, whatever they want. Go check them out. A lot of them are awesome small business owners and artists and creators themselves, so we love that. I love this community on here. You know who I don't love? JK Rowling. Let's talk about why. I made a video about JK Rowling a couple years ago when she first got into some controversies on Twitter. But for some background about JK Rowling, if you haven't been following all the drama going on with her online, we all know her as the creator of Harry Potter. She was very famous for that. Harry Potter, a very beloved series that lots of people loved growing up, right? And then everything changed with Fire Nation attack. As time went on, JK Rowling slowly started to get more and more obnoxious on Twitter. It started with the whole Dumbledore was gay all along thing, which like, fine, if Dumbledore's gay, good for Dumbledore, we're happy for him, okay? But then more and more, it seemed like she was trying to just tweet out things that she knew would get attention for the sake of staying relevant. So more and more, we'd get these tweets that were like, also this thing was happening all along. Also this thing was happening all along. And then when that craze started to die down, JK Rowling took to tweeting about transphobia and homophobia and just lots of really wild shit. She started supporting Matt Walsh and his whole What is a Woman documentary. She started tweeting about how only vaginas should be allowed in the women's bathroom, which is very weird. How would you even enforce that? Oh my god, we can only have vaginas in the women's bathroom because the penis people might sexually harass the women. How are we gonna figure out if there's only people with vaginas? Well, we'll have to ask. That's not sexual harassment at all. Like, how could you do it without creating more sexual harassment? Sexual harassment. I just want to give a little side note right here because when I've talked about JK Rowling in the past I've had people in my comments saying it's not transphobic to only want vagina women in the women's bathroom It's just that statistically people with penises are more likely to assault people with vaginas Okay, first of all people with vaginas can still assault each other people with penises can still assault each other And not only that but the most common type of assault and abuse is adult to child and we don't have separate adult and child bathrooms Let's just have one bathroom and have four Full doors. Building codes should have full doors that can close in the bathroom. If we just had a full door, none of this would be an issue anyway. So anyway, that's my whole point with all of that. But beyond stuff about the bathroom and trying to police the bathroom, she's been tweeting things about how people shouldn't have access to get certain surgeries that they want. She's been supporting Matt Walsh's bad faith argument about what is a woman and all of that. I have his book, What is a Woman? I'll be reviewing that at some point, but I just can't handle it right now. Because today I want to stick to the memes. Today I want to talk about what's going on with all of this. So along the way with all of that, J.K. Rowling started getting a lot of criticism. A lot of people were saying, hey, this is actually kind of terrible that you're using your platform to act like a dick and be really rude to trans people. You're a billionaire. You were very beloved. You could just retire and go off and like do your own thing. You don't have to be doing this. But she has a very strong fan base right now who seems to really like what she's doing. And then she has a very strong group of people who are saying, no, this is wrong. Now, lately, J.K. Rowling has been playing the victim a lot on Twitter, which is like, okay, first of all, Twitter is kind of the Wild West. It's not really the Wild West, but let's let's think of Twitter as the Wild West. If we all have the ability to say whatever we want on Twitter, we're gonna disagree sometimes. People are gonna be mean to each other sometimes. People are critical of JK Rowling on Twitter, but as far as I know, like someone said that, that her house got doxxed, which if that's true, I don't support that. Don't reveal people's addresses. That's weird. Don't do that. But also I'm pretty sure her address was public anyway, because she lives in a giant ass castle. So I haven't noticed anything like legitimately bad happening to her. She has been playing the victim quite a lot. And much like Ebony, Abobi, Anobi, An Anoni, whatever you want to call her from My Immortal. I grabbed a steak and almost stuck it into my heart. Constantly plays the victim because she is a goth and everyone else at the school is a prep and she just wants to say I said stop flaming you preps. If you're a prep then fuck off. I am gothic. As much as she wants to play the victim for being a quirky goth girl in 2006, JK Rowling has decided to play the victim for getting backlash and criticism on Twitter that is just people disagreeing and engaging with her ideas. Now, JK Rowling is firmly committed 
to telling us that this is not a self-insert fanfiction, that this story that she is writing has absolutely nothing to do with her life. Let's take a look at it and see what we think, okay? So this is from the subreddit called r slash not the onion. This subreddit is hilarious because as y'all probably know, the onion is a parody news site and this is a subreddit full of headlines that sound like they should come from a parody news site because they're so ridiculous, but they don't. They're actually true. Truth is stranger than fiction sometimes. So this post is called JK Rowling's new book about a transphobe who faces wrath online raises eyebrows. JK Rowling has said publicly that her new book was not based on her own life, even though some of the events that take place in the story did in fact happen to her as she was writing it. Life imitates art, art imitates life, all of that. So let's take a look at what this book is actually about on Amazon. We're gonna take a look at some of the reviews. It's getting a lot of negative reviews, but not for the reason I thought, which is also really funny. So this book is called The Ink Black Heart. It is part of her series of Cormoran Strike novels, which is a series of detective novels. At first I was like, I shouldn't read this book to review it because I haven't read the others. But then a lot of people told me that the other books in the series are kind of standalones within the series. It's kind of like watching Law and Order where you can watch an episode and then turn it off and watch another episode it's all in the same universe, but each story stands on its own. And so I'm like, okay, maybe I will read it. It sounds kind of ridiculous, but it's also literally a thousand pages. I don't know how she made this story into a thousand pages, but okay. Also, she has written this under her pseudonym, Robert Galbraith, which is interesting that she chose a masculine name for her pen name when one of her whole things is about trying to maintain women's only spaces. And the previous book she wrote in the series, it had a character that was like a man pretending to be a woman so that he could access women's spaces and assault them which in a lot of cases is used as a transphobic fear-mongering technique so she had that in the previous book and it's like well that's kind of interesting because I actually this is my what my pin tweet is right now which I think is hilarious my pin tweet right now says this why does JK Rowling think it's okay to go by the name Robert on some of her books that name sounds traditionally masculine and makes me fearful that she might call herself Robert to sneak into the men's locker room just just to gaze at my 12 inch dong. That tweet got a lot of likes. And this tweet was even liked by Nick DiRamio, who's one of my favorite YouTubers. And I was like, oh my God, what is this a crossover episode? Anyway, I replied to my own tweet and said, I'm a cis woman, by the way. I only pretended to have a 12 inch dong in the previous tweet so that I'd be allowed into the men's locker room to get away from Jen Sincero in the women's locker room. <laughs> That's a callback to the straight girl's guide to sleeping with chicks. Remember when I reviewed that book? That was a wild time. Anyway, I'm like, that's a little weird that JK Rowling is like, what if people are pretending to be a gender that they're not and then she names herself Robert it's just a little ironic I'm not a, I'm not the name police if you want to be a woman named Robert you can be a woman named Robert I'm not the name police it just seems a little weird when she's trying to enforce genders on people yet it seems to not want it to apply to herself but okay let's see what this book is about when frantic disheveled Edie Ledwell appears in the office begging to speak to her private detective Robin Ellicott doesn't know quite what to make of the situation the co-creator of a popular cartoon, The Ink Black Heart, Edie is being persecuted by a mysterious online figure who goes by the pseudonym of Anonymy. I think it's, it's supposed to be like anonymous, I think, right? Anonymy. Why couldn't Satan have made me less beautiful? Anami, mommy. <laughs> Edie is desperate to uncover Anami's true identity. Robin decides that the agency can't help with this and thinks nothing more of it until a few days later when she reads the shocking news that Edie has been tasered and then murdered in Highgate Cemetery, the location of the ink black heart. Okay, and so then from there it's a detective novel as they try to solve Edie's murder. But we've got Edie Ledwell, who J.K. Rowling is adamant is not based on her. She just happens to be the creator of a beloved young adult series that then later after the series, after people have found and loved the series, later she as the creator gets a lot of hate and criticism online. Those things just happen to coexist. It's not based on her life though. Just like Ebony is not a self-insert. She's not a Mary Sue. Remember what it said in My Immortal, Ebony is not a Mary Sue, she's literally depressed. She's a Satanist, okay? 
Thanks. P.S. I'm not updating until I get five good reviews. So this is the article on NPR that the Reddit, not the Onion post was linking to. It says J.K. Rowling's new book about a transphobe who faces wrath online raises eyebrows. Okay, let's read the article. And then we're going to take a look at some of the early reviews of the book. J.K. Rowling, who rose to fame as the author of the Harry Potter series, is known for writing about magical subjects in fantasy worlds. But her latest book bears more than a passing resemblance to reality, and critics say not in a good way. The Ink Black Heart is the sixth installment of Rowling's thriller series Cormoran Strike, which she penned under the pseudonym Robert Galbraith. The 1,024-page tome started raising eyebrows as soon as it hit stores on Tuesday. 1,024 pages! Are you trying to write War and Peace over here? Are you trying to recreate War and Peace, the greatest character from the Disney movie Sky High, who should have actually gotten the girl in the end, in my personal opinion? Observers noted that the plot appears to mirror Rowling's own experience of taking heat and losing fans for expressing transphobic views in recent years. Rowling has said publicly that the book was not based on her own life. You could have just stopped the sentence there and just say, Rowling has publicly said that the book was not based. And then the sentence would have been more accurate. It was apparently not based or based on her own life, even though some of the events that take place in the story did in fact happen to her as she was writing it. It's just a coincidence that the story's literally exactly about her. It's not a self-insert, you guys. Although I have to say when it did happen to me, those who had already read the book in manuscript form were like, are you clairvoyant? No, she's J.K. Rowling. I'm Kurt. I'm Ed. I'm aware. You said you were Kurt. Rowling wrote in a Q&A on Galbraith's website, I wasn't clairvoyant. I just, yeah, it was just one of those weird twists. Sometimes life imitates art more than one would like. What did I tell you? Except in this case, I think it's art imitating life. I think it's the other way around, Miss Robert. Why have I been calling her Robert or JK this whole time? Do you guys remember when I did the 12 Daves of Christmas back in December? And one of my 12 Daves of Christmas was Day of Rolling. I named her Dave K. Rowling instead of J.K. Rowling because I wanted her to be an honorary Dave. So she was D.K. Rowling. Sometimes we called her Donkey Kong Rowling. Sometimes we said the K stood for Karen. So she was Dave Karen Rowling because Karens and Daves are both the most needing to speak to the manager type of people. Karen is the woman version and Dave is the man version. Although J.K. Rowling or Dave K. Rowling was not featured in my Dave tier ranking video or in my official Deep Dave series because she was not assigned Dave at birth. In the book, a popular artist gets harassed for her opinions. The book centers on the story of Edie Ledwell, a popular cartoonist who, according to the official description, is persecuted by a mysterious online figure and ultimately found dead after her cartoon was criticized for being racist, ableist, and transphobic, at least partly over a bit involving a hermaphrodite worm, Rolling Stone reports. Guys, there was no way to know that when I, a young adult author who was being transphobic online, wrote a book about a young adult author who was being transphobic online, that people would think it was based on my own life. Like, where did you get that? <laughs> what? The book takes a clear aim at social justice warriors and suggests that Ledwell was a victim of a masterfully plotted, politically fueled hate campaign against her, the magazine continues, adding that the character gets doxxed with photos of her home plastered on the internet. It's not a self-insert, you guys. And faces threats of S.A. and death because of her opinions. Parts of the story seem to mirror Rowling's experience. Rowling has made her opinions known, particularly in regards to the transgender community over the last several years. She faced backlash in 2019 for publicly supporting Maya Forstater, a researcher who had lost her job over transphobic tweets. The following year, Rowling posted several controversial tweets, including one opinion piece that mocked the term people who menstruate. I'm sure there used to be a word for those people, she tweeted. And then she was like, wasn't it women? Which, to be fair, I read the article that she was talking about. The article was talking about, like, how to accommodate things for COVID with people who menstruate. It was about, like, trying to make sure people had hygiene products like tampons distributed to them fairly. And if you had substituted the phrase people who menstruate for women in that sentence, that wouldn't have described what the article was about because the article wasn't about making a fairer world for women because that could be about a lot of things. That could not just be about period products, but it could also be about things like making sure that we get rid of a lot of sexual harassment in the work place or looking at systemic sexism issues or looking at rates of SA and things like like there's a lot of different situations that lead into discrimination against women and misogyny as a whole but this article was specifically only focusing about menstruation so 
to substitute it with women would have just made it an inaccurate article title. All right, it would have made it just too broad. It was just an accurate title. So there was no erasure of women. This article was literally talking about specifically people who menstruate. It wasn't talking about all women. It's not just trans women that don't menstruate. Like a lot of older women who have gone through menopause don't menstruate. A lot of women with various health conditions, even if they have a uterus, sometimes still don't menstruate. Or some women have had a hysterectomy. Like there's a whole lot of reasons you might not menstruate. And then that article wasn't talking about you specifically. That article was talking about people who menstruate. So it wasn't trying to erase women. It was just trying to be descriptive. I don't get it. But anyway, JK Rowling decided to be upset about that because she's Dave Karen Rowling and has to always speak to the manager. Rowling said in November that she's received death threats. She's also publicly accused three activists of doxing her when they posted photos of themselves holding pro-trans rights side outside her house in Scotland, carefully positioning themselves to ensure that our address was visible, she said. So it's definitely not a self-insert. The activists who had been demonstrating in honor of International Transgender Day of Remembrance later deleted the photo and deactivated their accounts because of the amount of transphobic backlash they had received online. Scott Scottish police later investigated the so-called doxing and determined no crimes had been committed. Notably, Rowling's home is a popular tourist attraction, as them points out. So if the home is a tourist attraction and her address is already public, I don't think that's really doxing. I don't know the specifics of the situation, so I'm not going to comment for sure either way on what happened there. But it doesn't seem like if something is already public information, then... Revealing it isn't really doxing, I wouldn't think, but I'm not an expert. What I can tell, though, is that this seems to very closely mirror something that is said to happen in the book. So, kind of seems like a self-insert. Just saying. Critics say the book is self-serving and beyond parody. News of Rowling's book release has taken Twitter by storm, even prompted dueling hashtags. Hashtag I stand with JK Rowling and hashtag I can't stand JK Rowling. Critics have decried the book as hilariously self-persecuting and beyond parody, with some drawing attention to the real-world problems facing transgender people, deriding its length 500 pages longer than Dune, 300 pages longer than Infinite Jest, and 100 pages longer than the Bible. <laughs> I mean, Infinite Jest was written by another Dave, so we covered him during the 12 Daves of Christmas too. Lark Malachi Gray, co-host of the Queer Harry Potter podcast, The Gaily Prophet, that's hilarious, I love puns, dude, told NPR over email that he finds the situation deeply embarrassing for Rowling. She has published a 1,000 page self-insert fan fiction where she's the victim. It's the kind of behavior you'd expect from a petulant teenager, not a grown adult with immense wealth and power, he added. I have no idea what she expected, but seeing the internet fill with jokes about the book has been an absolute joy after all the harm she has caused my community over the past several years. If this book is at the maturity level of a teenager who would write self-insert fanfic... I started crying tears of blood, and then I slit both my wrists. Do we think J.K. Rowling herself wrote My Immortal? Because there's been so much speculation over the years of who wrote My Immortal. I believe it was Sarah Zed did a video about this topic of who really wrote My Immortal. People over the years have come forward as the author of it, and there's been so much speculation and trying to uncover it. And then at one point, like, the story got taken over by readers of it, who then started writing their own parts of the story and put it on the original author's account. Do we think J.K. Rowling herself wrote it? I want to think no. But like, it's just a funny fan theory, okay? All right, guys, let's take a look at some of the reviews of this book. Here we go. I'm enjoying it, but a chunk of the book so far is text chains and chat room conversations that display in very small, non-adjustable font on my Kindle. Hard to read. Feels like I'm missing critical info. So a lot of the reviews, guys, this book has terrible reviews so far. And I thought that the reviews were all going to just be making fun of JK Rowling for writing a self-insert fan fiction. And it's not. The majority of negative reviews are people who are actually fans of her and her work who are not critical of her normally, being really, really mad that the Kindle formatting got fucked up so badly. So get ready for this. Print is small and unreadable for portions of text. Disappointing to be unable to enlarge the tiny print that part of the book is published in. This is a major problem in the Kindle edition. Who allowed this ridiculous formatting in the Kindle version? Not acceptable. As others have already said, the Kindle formatting of the online conversations in this book is outrageously bad. Tiny type often in two vertical columns per page. I have a relatively recent Kindle Paperwhite, and it is possible to enlarge font to a readable size, but it's still so much trouble that it makes me want to throw the Kindle out the window. Whoever approved this formatting should be demoted to the mailroom. Personally, I think Amazon should immediately provide a readable, reformatted version for everyone who has purchased the Kindle version. And then this person very kindly gives a tutorial on how to enlarge the font on Kindle, and then says, unfortunately, you have to do this for each page. And as I said, this book is over a thousand pages long, and as a lot of people have pointed out, a lot of those pages are taken 
taken up with just all of these conversations of people being mean to her on the internet. All these fake tweets she made up of people hating her. So far, this is the next one star review. So far, not a single one star review I read has said, this is just a whiny self-insert fanfiction of Rowling victimizing herself. So far, all of them are mad that they can't fucking read it. This book is unreadable on the Kindle. Do not waste your money on it. It is quite disappointing that the publisher of a bestseller with a large number of pre-orders could not be bothered to make sure their customers could actually read it. Much of the text appears in tiny type in two columns. The two columns on each page represent different conversations. Even if you could read the tiny type in order to read the entire column of conversation, you have to go forward several pages and then go back to read the conversation in the next column. If you try to read everything on the page, it makes no sense. Ah! It's like everything that could go wrong went wrong. This is so funny. The next one star review, of course, impossible to read on Kindle. This review is not about the actual book, but rather it's Kindle edition. All right, let's see the picture. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's completely unreadable. Oh, <laughs> look at that. The two columns of that really tiny type just, oh no. Oh no, that looks so bad. Warning, teeny tiny print. I would not have bought this if I had realized there were pages of internet exchanges that I can't enlarge. I buy Kindle books because I can enlarge the font, so I'm unhappy that I have to hold a magnifier over the screen to read these parts. Formatting is foobar! The Kindle formatting is a mess. The parts of the book that are chats online are an awkward mess. The presentation is so bad that I know I'm missing stuff, but rereading is difficult. Oh my god. Every time I think the next one star review is finally gonna be like, JK Rowling is an awful person who's trying to victimize herself. Nope. Every review is like, I can't even fucking read it. Even the people who would like this book and who like her are like pissed off. This is so funny. The next one, ebook impossible. All right, let's check it out. Oh my god. This is what the ebook looks like. This is what it looks like. I kind of want to format the sequel to Cancel Sean Boston like this just for the meme. Just to annoy my readers for the meme. Probably a good book if you could actually read it. Formatting problem on Kindle. This is all of them completely unreadable on Kindle. Then finally someone who I guess got the print book said absolutely brilliant. And then, oh, nope, they did say they had no issues reading it on their Kindle. Then this person gave a tutorial about how to read it on Kindle. And you know what, you guys? I would want to read this book on Kindle if one, the formatting weren't terrible, and two, the book didn't cost $15.99 on Kindle. $16 for an ebook. I normally sell my ebooks for $3.99 to $5.99. That seems to be a good range sometimes for a little more if the ebook's a little longer, sometimes a little less if it's a little shorter. $16 for an ebook, for a book that's not even, that nobody even has to print, for a book that you just have to send on a file. There's no printing cost, there's no per unit cost for that. $16 for an ebook. Meanwhile, the hardcover is $21.49. The paperback's more expensive. I don't know why that is. Maybe because the paperback hasn't been mass released yet. So I don't know. So do you guys want me to read it? Do you want me to review it? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. Because part of me kind of wants to read it and do a whole review that's like, I read this book so you don't have to and point out all the like weird, tw maybe I'll even read it on Kindle just to have fun with how bad the formatting is. But I don't want to spend $16 on Kindle. So if anyone like has a file of it, they can send me or whatever. Let me know in the comments below. Slide into my DMs. We'll do a whole you wouldn't download a car thing. No, I'm just kidding. That's a joke for legal purposes. That's a joke. Anyway, let me know if you want me to review the whole thing. I think this whole situation is hilarious that JK Rowling basically my immortaled herself. But that's my thoughts on all that. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. I will see you guys, I don't know, another time. In the meantime, keep on supporting small businesses. Support some independent authors out there. Support independent authors from the LGBTQ community. They're out there writing some amazing stuff all the time. You don't need this self-victimization, self-insert, masturbatory bullshit in your life. Buy something from an indie author in the LGBTQ community today. I appreciate you guys. Have a good rest of your day. Bye! Get you some nuts. There was lots of memes. Makes me wonder if I should take up lesbianism. Chicago. You guys asked for it.